Hey guys, welcome back to the water cooler on our little corner of the internet here at Sorgatron Media. It's the movie minute. Mike Sorg here, uh, uh, turning the knobs, making things happen. And uh, and with us is the man who tells me uh, what I shouldn't watch this weekend. Uh, but I know I'm watching something the next weekend. It's Malengo at Rambling Mango on the Twitters, joining us from his remote command center. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, how you doing this week, sir? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? What, so, did you see any movies? That's going to be my question. No, all I saw was How I Met Your Mother, <laughs> Walking Dead, and uh, some Being Human. So, at oh, least I'm man. getting in the Halloween spirit with some Being Human and the American version, of course. Although well, I did see that there is another, another season on uh, Netflix for the uh, European version, but I'm a little iffy because I think I've read that the entire cast got switched up. Uh, huh. so, yeah, it's a little weird when they do that. It's like, really? How many situations can a vampire, a werewolf, and a ghost all end up living together? Like, Yeah, that's, that's like, weird. That's one of the ones that I never got into. I know the, the big, I guess... Halloweeny ones are Walking Dead for me. That that always seems to give me like an eerie pit in my stomach watching that show. And then the other one that I like is Grim. Grim, but Grim I, started yeah. up Sleepy Hollow. I got caught up on that. Uh, I mean, you, is that going well? Because it is. It way, way, off. way better. Like I, I mean, you know, granted, my expectations were down here. And yeah. it's, it's it's um, I think it's almost to Grim levels. Hmm. Yeah, I might want to catch back on. I fell off. There was like one day during lunch, I tried watching it like two or three times. I just, something kept happening where I wouldn't finish the episode. I just have not caught back up. But we're here to talk about movies, the stuff on the big screen or your small screen or whatever screen uh, whatever uh, coming up. Screen. But first on the big, I, I know they, it sounds like Netflix might be changing that from some of the news uh, that we don't have on this show, but but, but still. Uh, but hey, we brought somebody in. He's here. He's usually here anyways. Uh, but some of the talk i think he's going to be very interested in john chichilla at chilla on twitter is joining us how's it going he's going to be a sort of i feel like i'm on like a time slide i I hit the i hit the time change like uh, a week early oh did you (laughs) (laughs) so we'll just throw you into the yeah exactly so uh uh, how you doing chill not too bad not too bad happy to be here we we we, you know anybody that's been listening to us for a while knows our general line of movies how much do you get out and uh and uh and and see the big screen movies are you a netflix guy what's your deal just was a little introduction so people know where you're coming Um, from i'm heavy on the netflix um i am a cord cutter but i actually dvr a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. um and then i'm heavy on apps so like the cw app different things i probably make it to the movies once a month once every other depending on what depending on what's out Mm -hmm. in the summer i didn't see a ton of stuff outside of the uh, iron man 3 and maybe something else but yeah it's it's all going to be dependent on what's in the theater at the time awesome mango tell us what is coming up that we need to or what has come up in the past weekend that that we need to be interested in it well, what came up the past weekend? Well, in the, my tent in the is all screwed weekend, up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We'll 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 flip the order. All right. So this past the past weekend, uh, we'll go with the past weekend lineup. So uh, gravity, the uh, the reins at number one have been taken away from them after three weeks of holding strong, and it went to Jackass. Oh man, Grandpa style. Grandpa style. I I mean, again, this looks like this is the most interested I've been in a Jackass movie. Uh, in advance, but I love the, I love the theme. It feels like the Borat things. There's a character. Uh, it seems like it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, the one I what, some of the reviews I heard about it. Um, I'm still I haven't seen it yet, but I, I think I will see it while it's still in theaters. Um, probably like really cheap matinee. Uh, but yeah, some of the reviews I heard were very mixed. Some people saying they don't like the uh, story format that they opted for mm-hmm. uh, because they I guess they didn't get it scripted. So it's kind of just like a general story that just kind of like bounces along. And then other people are just saying, um, you know, some of the jokes kind of reach. I think I remember, it was, I think it was Jackass 3D, where some of the setups were pretty like long before they actually got to what they were getting at. So it'll be interested to see like a somewhat story format and how that relates to the Jackass in <laughs> the Jackass world that is jackass but uh yeah i don't know 
We'll but see. But yeah, I mean, for it to take off gravity, which has been strong, I think that's that's a plus. Still spent several weeks, and I, I think there was definitely a bit of a uh, curiosity to it. And, I mean, it did a, a, amazingly for the big names that were in it. I never really saw much about the big names that were in it. Yeah. Well, I don't. I mean. I don't know if they were trying to play up to that. And since I haven't seen it, I can't say how much of the original Jackass crew is in it. I'm mm-hmm. assuming maybe they play a role. But since it is story and scripted, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. So I can't, you know, I can't testify to what to what it is. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, if, if anything by what you saw in the movies, I think it's it's very true that Halloween movies are not as strong as I mean we don't see Carrie on this list at all in the top three at least so I mean it seems like people are going for more laughs than horror which I think is interesting and I wonder if Paranormal was it four that came out earlier this year or f- I don't even know is it five I f- well I think I'm seeing four pop up on my Amazon Prime so it, it must be five I can't believe that I was going to ask are they doing a five is that is that coming yeah it, I think it got I got approved for a five I think four came four was the one that we got earlier this year I think mm-hmm. and then um, it went to Netflix pretty quickly but they still made their money well that so. yeah that's the thing these don't have to do like super crazy well because they're there's such a low budget budget thing to happen um i mean you know i mean it's security footage uh, i mean there's some probably practical effects I, I i honestly haven't seen any since the first one uh but i can't imagine they've gone too crazy at least they didn't do something weird like when they went to like uh uh blair witch project 2 and just did a full regular format for the movie you know yeah this is true um, but yeah, so this week, real quick, um, the one movie that I, I mean, I did go back and watch Pitch Perfect. I was, I guess, my wife was in the the voice mood, so I kept hearing a lot of singing on television. Shachi really was, put that over. Said it's a. I, he actually bought it on like Xbox or Google Play or something. Yeah, I bought it too. It's, I bought it on It's pretty iTunes. good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's. And I've been. Uh, what's that? Rebel Williams that's in it. I mm-hmm. actually watched a little bit of her new show, Super Fun Night. Not half bad. Although really, I, I haven't I watched. I thought that. she was British. I think she is. She is, and she doesn't play British. But there's a British guy that she plays off of. I, <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so ethnically confused uh, on this one. That's funny. It's like when I realized but, House was British. I know. I know. Oh, is he? I mean, they have. I, I kind of. I kind of get that. Mm-hmm. I feel like he is. I could see that. Well, it was weird because on the final episode of House, they did like an hour long intro, and it was narrated. I don't know what the main actor's name is, but it was narrated by him. And I'm like, who's this yes. British guy? And yes. it's like, like oh. where did they get this British guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and there's actually, they have uh, uh, somebody, something in Laurie uh, on, on Hulu I keep seeing mm-hmm. advertised. I'm like, and I actually bet it in my cube because like, I want to see. It looks like it's a comedy sketch show or something. So from BBC. But, anyways, back to it. Yeah. So uh, I saw Runner Runner. Um, and that this movie did horrible in theaters. Mm-hmm. And the big thing about this movie was a very strong cast with a just I don't know what happened with the with the story. And I, I don't know if it was based off true events, which I, I think I saw. But this is one that people should just let it come accidentally in your Netflix queue. Oh, and this, this is the Ben Affleck Timberlake one. Yeah, yeah. And Timberlake isn't a bad uh, he's not a bad actor but it's just i don't know it just we kept slipping into scenes where you're kind of just like why are we going here with this <laughs> there's just a lot of he didn't care about any of the characters it just i it was almost a filler movie if you need to like do your laundry <laughs> really do your laundry you know you want some background noise this yeah, that's what it actually felt like. Something that would come on, like um, it was. Is it Stars that does? What's that like? The channels that just do the uh, no, not Stars. It'd be like USA Movies. So I would. That's what I would say. I would say let this come on TV, or it accidentally pops up in your mail on Netflix. This is the one that you want the commercial for burn, burn notice to walk into the frame while you're watching it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that was. 
it was pretty sad, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. All right. I saw it. I could check it off my list. <laughs> hey, you wanna you wanna do a quick break before we get into the big news? Nope. The, the big stuff that we nope. Want to I talk keep about. forgetting to put one in here. I should really. That's why there's a question mark, sir. <laughs> do you have a question mark? Because mine's highlighted in yellow. Oh, I think you. I think we had a version problem last last week when we did this. Uh, yeah, I know. I, it, otherwise, I just encourage everybody to go to SorgatronMedia.com, uh, where we got everything else that we're working on here. Uh, we're talking tech. We're going to be recording that right here after this show with the awesome cast, Wrestling Mayhem Show, and all the other stuff around wrestling. And, of course, Let's Play with InsertCoinToBegin.com, talking video games. Uh, and sign up for the newsletter so you know everything that we're working on and uh, when we finally get a YouTube page up for this show. Uh, but in the meantime, you can, of course, you know, this is over at YouTube.com slash SorgatronMedia and, of course, on iTunes. So, oh, Sorry. he's changing. Oh, he's changing his lighting. I see. <laughs> uh, all right, hey, let's get into some movie. All righty. Yeah. What Dude, do we got here? This was like this was like the the day. I don't know if it's the day or the week or whatever of uh, of trailers. Every 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 uh, superhero movie that we could possibly get seemed seemed to have. Uh, been released today we have captain america mm -hmm. we got x-men we got thor i'm excited you can't see this i'm <laughs> pounding on my i desk. can hear it though <laughs> So, so this kind of lends to our, our discussion last week about superhero. Of course, okay, first impressions. Captain America two came out last week. Uh, the trailer for it. Um, it's. I don't know what I expected out of Captain America two. Of course, we had the throwback with the first one. That was very. You know, World War II origin story. We had him continue into the Avengers movie. This is really the Captain America and Shield movie. Doesn't it seem? Yeah. Well, yeah, what I was reading was this is definitely it, – it takes place right after the Avengers. Which we've so, been doing with, like, Iron Man and everything, too, so it makes sense. Yeah. But to be honest, like, I mean, I know we talked about a little bit of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Iron Man, but it's more internal conflict in Iron Man 3 with himself and the situation and, the, mm -hmm. and what's really out there as opposed to Captain America 2. I mean, this is – like personally, the trailer makes me want to see this movie because I was not impressed with the first one. Okay. And I feel like when I, you know, when I when I read the plot for this one and I see the whole like, is Shield good? Conflict with Shield, conflict with himself, conflict with apparently his past. Um. It well, seems like it could be intriguing. Wait, do you know do you know the story of the Winter Soldier from the comic book? I read up a little bit on it. And no um, spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying don't to really keep it away. quiet until my wife sees it. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much of it. Um, and uh, I forget the female lead. I just had her name in my head. Uh, I want to say Scarlett Johansson. Yes, that's but, right. Uh, yeah. Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll also play up on the uh, romantic part of that. But I don't know how much people actually care about that. <laughs> that conversation actually came up in a podcast I was listening to about uh, how superhero movies have really uh, kind of shied away from romance. Besides Jean Grey and um, one other, one other female lead. Cyclops and Wolverine. Oh, oh, you mean uh, uh, Catwoman? Are you maybe speaking well, of? I don't know. Did they? I don't think they really played up that much on Catwoman. A little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I think they have not because you got to think like back to like the Batman Superman movies. I think they were over mired with the female leads. You know, it's like Batman's yeah. got a new girlfriend. Let's see how this goes. You know, I mean, I don't <laughs> she's remember. She's gonna die. There's, there, yeah, she's gonna <laughs> die. Uh, I mean, I don't remember reading too many Batman comic books where he had a girlfriend to deal with. You know, there are a couple actually a very good uh, Kevin Smith one that deals with that kind of concept, but he, yeah. does, he usually doesn't end well. But the and, TV shows always do. That's the interesting thing. It's yes. like they pull the romance out of the, the the movie and they throw it in the TV show. Like if you're watching Arrow right now, which I'm really into, yeah, but Arrow like, is on the CW. 
Which what, means which they pick up amazingly. <laughs> I, I'm just glad it's not like Green Arrow in high school, like like they wanted to do a Smallville. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, 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 this is another tangent, but uh, uh, I think they've done a really good job with Arrow. It's not like campy Green Arrow. There's they're getting a lot of elements. There's if you saw the last episode of Arrow and you're like a DC, especially Batman fan, you just had a geek gasm uh, at the end of that episode um, because some of the people that are popping up there and so well, the, the names it, that were mentioned, Superman or Batman, what? See, I thought that with the name that popped up was from Batman. Well, the one name that popped up is from the last Batman right. set of movies. Yeah. So, um, they don't spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it because I know some people, even behind. though it's been out for like a week. But still, know. you know. Um, <laughs> And, and, of course, Black Canary's all over it, and mm-hmm. they've done Huntress a little bit, and it's been a little weird how they did Huntress in that. But it seems like it feels like they're interjecting all the Batman stuff they didn't get to in the movies, you know, which makes you think, oh, are they going to cross over to that thing? Well, they're but, doing that with S.H.I.E.L.D., too. Yep. They're, I think they're doing that with the S.H.I.E.L.D. a lot. They're pulling a lot of different background they're, stories. They're throwing from... a lot of obscure characters. If you Like this past episode of S.H.I.E.L.D., if you look up some of the names for that, um, uh, what was his name? Scorcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, uh, even even the, the girl that the, the girl in the flower dress. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you pull up her name, it pulls up a character. But it was like, you look it up, it's like, yeah, this is an obscure character. Nothing was really done with him. It is a, a savage. He's a mutant, you know? So it's like, oh, wait, we can do mutants in the Marvel Universe now? Like, but They're not allowed to use that word, though, I think. They're not, I, yeah, I think that's it. Because I'm like, this really looks like these people have powers for no reason. They're mutants, right? But they can't say it because 20th Century Fox owns that for the X-Men franchise. Mm-hmm. So I think they're being clever and saying, well, if you know Marvel, you know what this really is. Um, but uh, some of it they attribute to the Extremis Project, which came out of the last Iron Man movie. Exactly. And, and they're, they're, they comment a lot about Stark t- technologies mm-hmm. and how, how they contribute. They talk about Captain America. They talk about the mm-hmm. Avengers. Um, I, and I love that it's a TV show and it expands that universe. And I love that Captain America is, again, you're talking about it's coming right after Avengers. Iron Man came right after. Uh, Iron Man was, yes, there was a lot of internal stuff, but it's his reaction personal reaction to what happened in this big avengers movie right and I, what i think those what you'll see is is over time as, as shield gets signed on permanently i think mm-hmm. you're going to see it being the bridge between all the movies mm-hmm. and and they they're actually seem to be doing it extremely well mm-hmm. with with bridging the gaps like so shield takes place right after what happened in new york yes i have a feeling the, like the Iron Man movie was a little bit down the road mm-hmm. from when that occurred. I think it was like nine months or something. I'm guessing that <laughs> He's had Captain time. America he had is going to be time. right after. He had enough time to make 40 Iron Man suits, <laughs> yeah. which I think is maybe yeah. one a night, but still. <laughs> you know. Well, he has the little machines. He can, That's they true. can, they can do true. it around the but clock. The cap, but, you know. um, well, wasn't it technically, was it, was it 40 was the last scene? I think there were more than that when 40, he blows up. To the- no, Mark 43 was the last the the most current gen mm-hmm. model it, it, okay that makes sense yeah. i just remember the one shot where they like they pan down and we just see all, all of the suits mm-hmm. well, so i'm I, guessing that's for the 43 either way i i love and this is why i'm not tired of it uh because i've read marvel and if you read marvel you know kind of the flavor and the intertwining things i love how everything connects and you can say okay you know, something sprawling events like Civil War or something. If you read the comic books, you're like, well, this didn't connect with this. Well, they have a lot of books they're dealing with, a lot of different editors, a lot of different writers. But they're taking that mentality. Like, when they go and do the S.H.I.E.L.D. show, when they go do the Captain America, they go do the Iron Man, you do feel like they're sitting down with the writers and saying, this is the universe you're writing in. Pay attention to it. You know, versus X-Men seems like it's not doing as well a job of doing that. You know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of stuff they kind of disregard with, from the old movies. Um and I think it's a fault of some of the directors along the way, too. Um, but there's a certain level of care to this is a universe and we're establishing this. We're making our movies like we make our comic books. I wonder if they took a page out of George Lucas's book because George Lucas actually has a database. Really? When you write it because the books are so large, mm-hmm. like there's such a large following in the book world. Yeah. When you write a book that interacts in that universe, mm-hmm. you actually check in and check out characters 
and it forces for, you to follow time for the lines. canon, like ones that they established for huh. canon. Yeah, that's interesting. What do you think about that's Star really Trek? Really cool. Think about Star Trek, and there's also the canon versus mm-hmm. non-canon when it comes to Star Trek as well. Um, like I loved read like the like the few Star Trek books I read, I loved because it would always call back to like I remember watching that episode. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, the kind of the same idea. How many Star Trek series, and they all kind of intertwine and throw back, and and you you you're you're rewarded for being a fan and follower of the entire thing right and that's where i think marvel wins that's where i think especially with this new series and with the comic books that's where star trek wins that's when where star wars wins if it's mm-hmm. done well, well yeah. you know um but you know granted jj abrams can do no wrong J. J. <laughs> hey jj abrams is teaming up with that empire strikes back writer i i, I heard I, there's gonna be the there's gonna be the uh one of the events with uh jar jar in it i'm kidding <laughs> Jar Jar is going to be like the the premier character in the in the the next movie. It's actually going to be gonna his kid. A, we're going to do a Boba Fett movie. We're going to do a Jar Jar movie, and we're going to do a uh, you know I'd love to see a Jabba the Hutt movie. You know I, I would like to see just like that all like let's just do one. And maybe maybe the Boba the Fett one would more do this, but just a complete like this is the underworld, dark underbelly. That's not the big. There's this big war coming out on here. And this is what's going on with the guys in the shadows. Well, they did they did some cool books around that where it was like a, a ton of short stories that mm-hmm. really took something that was like a minute coverage in the movie and then mm-hmm. blew it out into last thing I remember hundred like pages of story. Last thing I remember like this that I really enjoyed, and you're gonna hate me for this, Matrix. I enjoyed the Matrix. I enjoyed the Matrix yeah, movies. I love the Matrix. Even when it got a little Dragon Ball Z at the end. Um, oh, but well, that they, was well, the well, last well, But on another one, another one, Heroes. And, 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 and oh, not, for, not for just sitting there and watching the show, but Heroes did this and Matrix did this as well, where they had these comics. Mm-hmm. And you could go on. And it was expanding the universe out. And, yeah. and Heroes did a really good job. And again, talking about that having a contained world in movies and expanding it out. Um, it's from Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, who are veteran writers for comic books. They actually, I think both of them started Smallville, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they were able to create that narrative in that world, much like they've learned from DC and Marvel. Like they apply like all the good points of DC and Marvel to the TV writing world and expanded it with all their little web series and their, uh, comic books and everything. It makes you feel rewarded for checking in for that other thing. We talk about web series over these past ten years. I think it was like the perfect example of all that kind of stuff. I think stuff. Covert Affairs is doing that, which is a USA really TV show. Yeah, Walk, well, Walking Dead's going to be doing oh, spinoffs. Mm-hmm. They did a spinoff web series. You know, Heroes I, might come come back. They they might have like another. I heard speculations of that. Yeah, I heard. A, oh like no, that. that's horrible. <laughs> they shouldn't do that at all. You <laughs> know what? Actually, and Chachi's in the chat room. He can probably speak to this. If he's still hanging out in there, he's actually started over watching Heroes. I started that uh, like six months ago, and I got through most of season one. I never finished season four. I I just never got around to it. So I'm like, you know what? I kind of, and he keeps telling me, but oh, I love this part. I'm like, I want to watch that again, you know? And then I can sit down and slam through the whole thing. I think it would be really rewarding to do that. Heroes keeps getting recommended to me, which is odd because since I'm a cord cutter, I have, but I have TiVo as my DVR. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you're watching Shield. Oh, because we know you're a Netflix customer. Oh, you'd probably like Heroes. So like, it keeps getting thrown in my face with all the Uh, different things I'm watching. Yeah, Netflix does that. Keeps throwing me weird stuff. Of course, in in two weeks we get the next chapter in this whole Marvel thing. We got Thor coming up. Yes, this is the one that of the three right now. This is the one that I'm pretty much most excited for. More than X Men. Yeah, I saw the trailer for X Men. I was really because I really like the the revamp that they did with X Men. I like these characters. I like the way it's filmed. But this trailer confused me. I'm not sure <laughs> what's going on with Wolverine. Like, okay, is he going into the past to to mold Xavier and Magneto? And that's where it got me. I'm like, why? He is the worst character to kind of mold a path for these guys. But isn't that what happened? Maybe it'll be explained. I don't know if this is part of a comic book that I just never well, read. Well, I think, and I think it's well. Again, the original story, and I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see see how they're doing this because they're doing a lot of kind of throwbacks. Actually, that like like. Lately, there have been a lot of throwbacks to Day of, Days of Future Past, and maybe it's in build up to this kind of storyline because there's a. 
there's some really interesting time stuff going on with uh, in the comic books, actually. And maybe this is maybe lending to that a little bit, too. In the comic books, they did this thing. Of course, if you're not caught up on it, uh, uh, Scott Summers, uh, Cyclops, uh, actually like got the Phoenix and went crazy and killed killed, killed Xavier. Um, this is like a year ago, so I'm not spoiling, spoiling, spoiling. Um, and they actually brought the original five X-Men to yeah. the present so that Scott can talk some sense into himself, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's the series that I'm in right now, and I love it. I kind of want to see the one before that where the Phoenix kind of, where Xavier is killed by Scott because of... Yeah, stuff. yeah, and honestly, the moment they do it is really kind of anticlimactic. They're like, oh, Xavier's dead. It's like, what, what, what? what? You know, like, <laughs> it was one of those like crazy crossover books, and they did so much. It's one of those. But books. that's not that's not related to this movie, though. But I no, thought no, this no, movie no. was no, based no, no, on no. another. But, but, but this is the whole like no, this is an old story where um, Kitty Pride gets there, involved. There's Kitty Pride involved, and and I think I thought it was Wolverine Logan. and Bishop. It depends how you're looking at it. They, did a, they did a version of it in the X-Men cartoon. They've done different versions of this in, in every version of X-Men that there's been in cartoons and everything like that. I think even like Wolverine and the X-Men did a version of this too. So there's different variations. The main original idea was um, Sentinels have taken over. They're killing all the mutants. Most of them are dead except for Old Man Wolverine and I guess Kitty Pride, if I recall. It's been a while since I read this story. Um so, I mean, they're obviously modifying it for all the crazy crap they've done in the X-Men universe in the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and plus what they've established with First Class, which again is a little bit different than, it's like, the first X-Men did not involve, you know, uh, Mystique and Beast and, and did they even, they didn't even have Angel, you know, I mean, well, okay. Beast Wait, was, the first, the first, the, the first X-Men? The first X-Men had Beast, but he wasn't blue. That's, and he had, that, they had heard. Saber too. they had a a clip of saber tooth he he appeared when wolverine was boxing at the beginning of the movie at the very beginning of x-men one okay there's a scene where um what's her rogue runs away yeah and ends up in like upstate canada or something i yeah. don't know mm-hmm. and wolverine's like on the street and they allude to the fact that like there's this saber tooth type character that busts down a tree in front of a truck or something. I can't remember exactly what happened. It's been so long. It was saber tooth, and but it was a but, different yeah. version of saber tooth. Yeah. Again, there's just a lot of that doesn't connect mm-hmm. in the movie universe. So I that's why I keep wondering. This is like uh, re, it seems like they're reconnecting all that stuff they've let loose. Um, I love that Brian Singer is back with it because I thought he did an amazing job with the first two. Oh uh, yeah, they're molding both of the X Men. I just, I just remembered that. That's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. Not, <laughs> really? I don't. I would love besides the the guy. I don't know his name, and I'm sorry, Internet. The guy that plays Magneto is a freaking awesome actor. Fastbender or the yeah the new Magneto the, the new or the Magneto? old Magneto. The old Magneto. Wait, the older guy or the from one the, from the older? The older movies? guy. The older guy. <laughs> the guy from. You mean Lord Gandalf? Of the Gandalf. <laughs> I think he was an awesome Magneto. I mean, the new Magneto and the new series are good too, but I see them bringing the old characters back, and I just, I don't, I don't like Hugh Jackman. I'm sorry again, Internet. He's a horrible Wolverine. <laughs> By the way, you're looking for Ian McKellen, I believe. Uh, I'm not excited. I want to be excited, though. I'm going to see this because I like the style that this is filmed. It seems like a more serious, more <laughs> raw, more not not dark, but just handled more seriously than the jokes that we got in X-Men 1, 2, and 3. It was a but, different time. It's before we had the Dark Knight. It, it, come on, man. Uh, You're allowed to be a little Wasn't it a different candy. time? They're bringing the gorgeous Halle Berry back. She's attractive, but she does not need to be in any more X-Men movies. (laughs) And they had to, like, (laughs) alter all her filming and all her cutscenes because she was pregnant. Oh, Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so I wonder well, if they're I'm they're they're going to show her like chest up in a lot of scenes or well, it's around also or... And, and, and well, I, I watched a little because it was like it was advertised like right beside. Actually, it's on this page too. Uh, the press conference from Comic Con, San Diego mm-hmm. Comic Con, where they had everybody. What does Peter Dinklage play? He is the 
he's the guy from the company that created Wolverine. Oh, that's right. He's he's Tr- it's Trask. Trask. Yeah, yeah. He's Bolivar Trask, which actually is a Sentinel uh, creator, yeah. I believe. Uh, you're thinking, uh, I'm it's slipping my mind. The other Trask. The other guy. Um, but yeah. It, Are we going to see the Sentinels, Stryker. or is this going to be alluded to it? I they had a head. I'm watching the trailer again. I don't. I don't. No, see they any. don't allude to anything with Sentinels. But all the teasers before this have been like Trask Industries and and pictures of Sentinels and like advertisers with Sentinels. And I, mean, I think at San so Diego Comic Con think, they had one of the heads. Yeah, I think they're hiding it. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I, that I think, could be good. I think I think there's a lot you didn't see in this trailer. It feels like like a lot of the stuff feels like it's been edited around. You know, and, and and it's not very clear. Although it's really weird that they did say, uh, "Yeah, you're going to be a younger you." Maybe for Super Bowl commercial like for Wolverine. Maybe Super. There you go. That's where you're going to see your Sentinel as the Super Bowl. But excited for it, Malengo. Malengo, the chat room saying that you hate everything. I know. Hey, <laughs> I am. What, what did we call me last week? I am a movie snob. You're a movie snob. Oh no, or, or what hipster was it? Or, is, or a hipster snob? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's my angry face ah. no because if he was a hipster he'd want all the old stuff like the old tv oh, the first the spider-man was the tv best. shows the spider <laughs> <laughs> from the 70s where like it, you can blatantly tell he's like climbing across the floor that's a painting of a building <laughs> i like the 1989 <laughs> batman didn't get much better than that <laughs> oh man i just feel like no i'm not i'm not gonna critique this anymore i want to see it so i'm not gonna I'm not going to put myself down. But like I've said in the past, which I'll give X-Men credit for, if the trailer is too good, don't go see the movie. Because <laughs> it's all the good parts, right? <laughs> it's all the good parts. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, what else we got to talk about here? Oh, hey, so um, Ryan Tomato did a uh, did a top 100, or their, their top 100, poll on scary movies Mm -hmm. and i was looking through it and i feel like the scary movies that i watch must not be scary enough because the closest to number one on this list that that freaked me out that i've actually i guess seen was aliens the top five i don't think i was born when they came out (laughs) (laughs) that's a that's an interesting distinction um (laughs) They just haven't gotten better, man. There you go. There's your movie history. There you go. You got Gold Dust. Or, uh, what, what is that? Culture Geist. I don't know how that other thing came out. I'm getting ready for my other show. The Dead Zone, Near Dark, um, Conjuring, After a- Attack the Block. That's a horror movie? I've never seen that one. Let I, me in. It's not a horror let movie. Me, I don't, let me I don't know why. One. They do have a lot of jumping out at you. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're consisting of horror these days. Yeah, it is. Any suspense, The Fly, Shaun of the Dead. I really were counting Shaun of the Dead. It's kind of a comedy, but still a lot of gore, you know. Um, Zombieland. Was Fright good. Night. That's, that's a classic. More of a comedy. Zombieland. But it's still gory. It still counts, I think. Um, no, I think I, I, Carrie is at number 48. We've been talking about that the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, Dawn of the Dead is number 35. Makes sense. So, I mean, and that's the original. I Cabin in the Woods, I think, was a little better than what uh, what they put it at, 32. But, I mean, if this is a course of history, mm-hmm. then I guess I could say that this holds up. Yeah, because you got to think, because I think we're, you're looking at old movies. Like, you know, there's a 1958 fly they're holding as higher regard than that. I think the other one's from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you got to think, you, you got to take everything in. Like, if you watch, you know, Night of the Living Dead, the original one, well, now you're just like, I, I don't know if I get it. You know, it's a different time. It's a different style. We expected different things. You know, just like Spider-Man 1 was an amazing movie 15 years ago. But maybe it's like, ah, it's a little campy. I don't know about this one. And you know? Spider-Man 2 I, sucked. And Spider-Man... <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it was bad. I'm Spider-Man sorry. 3 was bad. 3 was horrible. 3 was bad. I thought the Doc Ock one was the best one. Uh, that's a whole... We're, we're back to that. But anyway, yeah. same with the horror movies, though, you know? Um, I mean, I went back, you know, several years ago. Like I said, I went back and watched all the Halloween movies. I had never seen them. And I'm just like, why did, why did we like this? You know, yeah. In the long run. Like, I heard The Fly was good. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe one of my traditions is, is playing scary movies during Halloween. That's yeah. what we do. We throw Halloween parties. So maybe I go through this list and I just start finding scary movies that 
might be good. I mean, the Alien series was freaking phenomenal. Yeah, and that still scares me. Dude, I watched the that new prequel one they did, Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus. I thought that was great. That was yeah. a lot more than I expected. <laughs> I think the soundtrack, though, um, I, the guy that does the soundtrack to that does a phenomenal job. That that whole movie had a great feel of just like nothing good can happen. <laughs> yes, but that's what that, I mean. And it I, surprises that credit, you. That's where a good soundtrack. And it surprises be. you because you get halfway through the movie before anything happens, and I think that's a good horror movie because like nothing happens for the first half of Halloween, you know, or or something like that, and then all of a sudden that's really people Scott. Are, People are dropping, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah first half of Alien, that's just, that's, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. It's all yeah. spooky stuff. Maybe you get one guy busting out of a chest. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, and then it's just like bam, bam, bam. Um, it, it builds up that suspense for like over an hour. Like when stuff like started happening, I'm like, this is like a two and a half hour movie. And I'm like, just through the first hour, it's going to get crazy beyond that. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's a good good taste of it. So. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna, uh, okay, let's wind things down because I'm going to go check out Ender Game, which mm-hmm. has been getting a lot of hype. So uh, we're going to go see if it lives up to the hype. But uh, with that note, there are four big movies coming out this weekend. Two of them I've seen, and I gave my reviews on the past shows, but we have Ender Game, which is the one that, I think we'll take it this weekend in the box office. It seems like it's very much anticipated. I did hear one review that was kind of funny, uh, saying that a lot of this action that we see on screen comes from children. But I think the story will be compelling enough to hold people's attention. It's sci-fi. So, I mean, I'm excited. We got Free Birds, an animation. Um... I was supposed to see this one for free. Uh, I, that being said, I missed it. It's gotten the. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Is this? The I don't one know. That... I don't know if I'm going to spend the thirteen dollars for a movie ticket to go see this, unless I have like nieces and nephews pulling yeah. on my like coat saying, "We want to see this movie." Uh, then you got Las Vegas and About Time. I think I've had I've had my past reviews, but based on this lineup, I don't see any of those two movies doing well this week. So it might be more for actually. I'll be it'd be interesting to see if these three movies, seeing how they both start in the beginning of November, how long they actually build. All three of those movies, Free Birds, Las Vegas, and About Time, can make a large majority of their of their money back at the end of November, when people are actually on vacation with Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So we've got so. from the chat room, uh, you're a, a curmudgeon, according to the chat room, and uh, here's a review for Ender Game in advance. It's terrible. <laughs> it, it, this is what they're expecting for next week. <laughs> uh, we shall see. We'll see. <laughs> well thanks right, Malango. thanks chilla for joining us talking some superhero movies with thanks us for having me he joins us uh on awesome cast you can check that out sorgatronmedia.com of course you're at chilla on in the like 10 minutes in like 10 minutes yeah um and Malango at rambling mango yep the site's actually almost done i uh i got a new page up so we're figuring out dimensions for the comic strip awesome. so hopefully in two weeks we should have uh some movie reviews via comic strip up which would be cool so hopefully that will line up with our number 10 episode where we start letting more people know that we're doing the show yeah that'll line up a little bit a little more promotion it'll it'll, it'll be nice it'll be nice so we'll have this down and i'll know what to call the show at the beginning of the show (laughs) because that's been an issue also i think the the other big thing we could talk about november 8th is the release of thor Yes. So we would like to have a big Google Hangout, um, or a Google Hangout. We don't know if it'll be big or not. But if you're interested, hit us up. Either hit me up on Twitter, or you know, 
right into Mike and say, hey, I'd like to be on that show. That's right. Where we could get people's opinions. We could have a good back and forth. I, and we did people. this before. I, and we did these uh, before for actually for Awesome Cast uh, back yeah. when the Facebook movie came out, Social Network. Um, and we did this where we just kind of went to a coffee shop afterwards, put up a couple cameras, and I kind of post edited it, you know. Um, so, but I like the we have Google Hangout. We can do this. We don't have to all get together. We can all see it Friday night. Just hop on later. And that's up yep. for people to check out over the weekend. Um, really love that idea. If you are interested, again, hit up Malengo at Rambling Mango. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter or hit up at Sorgatron Media also on Twitter. Um, and you can also join us here live. We start the show round about, usually a little later, after 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. So go check us out. Join us in the chat room and you can tell Malengo how much you think he hates movies. Um, <laughs> like Chachi does during the show and all that kind of stuff. Or tell him how much you agree to him and everything in the theater sucks these days. That's <laughs> so, true. <laughs> so thanks Malengo. Chilla. And we'll see you guys next week on The Minute.